Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And as a married couple, we review, score, and rank different, uh, what we call nerd movies that we love. Um, right now we're starting with the Marvel Universe, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And we've just watched Avengers Infinity War. So I'm sure some of you have seen this. You know it's a little bit of a tougher movie to take, uh, particularly as it ends. Yeah, so, when we first watched this in the theater, Bethany was so mad at me that... Oh, I was. <laughs> I seriously... I, I, I think I actually like gave him a punch in the arm because I was just like, why did you bring us to this? This is terrible. I couldn't believe he brought me to a movie just to watch all my favorite characters die. I was I was very mad. Yeah, Captain America lived. Not everyone died in that one. I mean, I love you, Captain America, but, like, I want all my heroes. Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, how we do this is, so we're, re we're re-watching these movies, um, and then we developed a scoring sheet that you can go ahead and you can take a look at um, down below. It's in the uh, description of this video. You can either download it or uh, go online. Um, we promise it's not a virus, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and so, in this scoring sheet, we have different categories that we feel make up a great Marvel movie. Uh, you know, humor, side characters, uh, female empowerment, female empowerment, uh, action sequences, obviously. So we do go ahead and we score all those, and then based on that score, that's how we rank them. So now on to Avengers: Infinity War. In the past, the Avengers movies we've had Iron Man and Captain America as our two male leads, um, foregoing the traditional lead male and lead female yeah. categories. This had a little bit of a curveball thrown at us. I don't think Captain America was featured as much in this one. Um, I think Thor and I think Gamora have uh, the case can be made for them as being one, the other lead character. Um, ultimately, we decided it was Thor. This movie does begin and end with Thor. I gave both Thor and Iron Man a score of four in the likability category. This is I want these guys in my inner circle of friends. I gave the same exact scores. I gave them four as well. I want both of these in my inner circle of friends. Our next category is lead male and lead male bangability. So how much do we want to bang these sexy guys? Uh, I gave them a zero. I said no thanks, I'm good for both. So for me, uh, I give Thor a score of four. Uh, oh, wow. Is, I think this is the highest we've ever given this Thor. Is, this is the highest score for Thor. Um, nice Thor. Which was, you know, there'll be some shower sex, morning sex, thanks to your later sex. Um, obviously, Thor has always had a nice body, <laughs> but the personality has never really been there for me in terms of having more of that uh, attractive appeal. Like I said, in this one, he, he changed it up, and I found him much more attractive. Um, additionally... For Iron Man, I gave him a score of five, yeah. which is, this might be more than just a bang. Uh, Iron Man's really grown up. He's gone from being just the self-involved playboy narcissist to really becoming a man, a leader, someone with heart, someone with integrity, and someone who is able to care about things outside of himself, and not just himself, but outside of his immediate family or his personal business or I mean he's just got a broader scope now and I think that makes him really attractive. That leads us to our lead male and lead male relatability category which is basically how much do you relate to these guys? Do you do you see yourself in their journey and, and where do you belong in, in this world? So, uh, For me I gave them both a two. I said it's not me but it could be one of my friends or family. So I agree with you when it comes to the score for Iron Man. Who I really related to was Thor. Um, I gave him a score of three, which is, it's the best parts of me, at least right. I think it is. But I related to that, you mess with my family, I'm coming for you. And so I think that just, he was much more relatable to me in that way. And our next category is the villain. Thanos is our villain, and what is his end goal? His end goal is to end half of all life in the universe. To bring balance. Yeah. Isn't he a great guy? To bring balance. Actually... Uh, yeah, the way you said it was actually a lot better to bring balance. He wants to bring balance to the universe. That makes him actually seem like a great guy. I almost thought he was the hero in this one. You know, I might have said it better, but you missed my facial expression, which they all saw. And trust me, I was not giving this guy credit for anything. Okay, so how many people does this affect his end goal? Wait, what, what do you think? Everyone. It's all half of life as we know it. So that's a score of five. Yep, yeah, there's no doubt that is definitely a score of five. How strong is the villain compared to the hero? Uh, again, I mean, I think this one's pretty obvious. Yeah, uh, he's a, it's a four. He is significantly stronger than all the heroes. I mean, it takes everyone to try to take him down, and uh, they still don't. Now on to what I feel is gonna be one of our uh, maybe end my marriage category. <laughs> oh, don't even. do you, did you not. care about the villain? And I do care about the villain. I gave him a four. I said, is it wrong that I like the guy? I'm sorry. 
told you it's gonna you end. You should be sorry. It's gonna end the marriage. You should be terribly sorry. I honestly felt that there wasn't a score high enough to to illustrate the amount of hate that I feel for Thanos. <laughs> I think this is all about him being this god among beings who's going to have a grateful universe kissing his butt. Sorry, Thanos, we're not gonna be grateful when you wipe out half of life. So piss off. Which brings us to our next category, which is villain bangability. Uh, you know, it get a zero from me, but with all that passion that you have with Thanos, I mean, that might be a nice hate bang. Would you, uh, what, what would Hell you do? to the no. <laughs> Up next are side, side characters. characters. So I want to roll here as far as her not oh, liking me. Oh, you didn't, seriously. Uh, so I gave Falcon a zero. Um, I didn't think, th I think if you took him out of this, the plot wouldn't, wouldn't have any holes. I love Falcon. I campaigned for Falcon and you gave my guy a zero. I, you we, are so not getting lucky tonight. For the for my ones, for the plot has some holes. For me, it wasn't just plot, but it was these characters touched me in some sort of cerebral, logical, they affected my head. Mm. That's where they belong. Doctor Strange, The Dark Order, Black Panther, Groot, and Black Widow. For me, I gave a one to Groot and I gave one to The Dark Order. Originally, the twos on our sheet are that the hero becomes less likable, redeemable, relatable without these characters. For me, I felt like this was the heart. These are the characters who touched me emotionally uh, on some level. So it went to Bruce Banner. I was torn with this because I felt like he also brought some humor, but sometimes it felt a little pushed for me. Scarlet Witch, Vision, obviously they greatly affected me. Um, Falcon, I thought he did bring in a lighthearted element. And so for that, he, he, got, he got above a one because he deserves more than that. <laughs> he deserves more than zero. Uh, also, Gamora and uh, Captain America. Uh, for me, Captain America made it just because he so often embodies the heart and soul and conscience of this team. Uh, for me, I kind of stole a page from your playbook. Um, we talked about in, I think it was the first Avengers. Uh, if you want to check out that review, hit the YouTube card. We talked about the side characters and like them kind of all interacting with each other and you love like their interaction. Um, it might have been maybe Avengers Age of Ultron. It was one of the Avengers ones. So that's kind of how I scored it. Like, I'm just like, okay, these characters kind of all contributed because they bounced off well off of one another. Black Panther, Rocket, Black Widow, Scarlet Witch, Vision, and Spider-Man. And then for my threes, so basically I had those who affected my head, those who affected my heart. The threes are humor, so these are the people who made me belly laugh. Rocket, Star-Lord, Spider-Man, and begrudgingly Drax. <laughs> You didn't have to give Drax anything. Well, I'll remember this for future ranking. Let's <laughs> fit on my guy. I don't know why you're so vendetta. Because Falcon did not deserve a zero. So vengeful. Yes. Uh, so I'm like Thor. So for me, yes, she is. See, I'm her Thanos. Uh. At the moment, yeah, you like the guy. You actually like the guy. I got a beer with him. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. I just, you know, I. I'm sorry. No, they're sorry for you. You're, yeah. you're stuck with me. Yeah. Um, so for my threes, I gave it to Star-Lord, I gave it to Hulk, um, and I gave it to Drax. So for my fours, I gave Captain America, I gave Doctor Strange, and I gave Gamora all of four. I don't think that Doctor Strange gets enough credit because everyone talks about the sacrifice that Tony makes in Endgame and Hulk and Black Widow, but Doctor Strange was the first one to make the, make the first sacrifice. Because he saw in the future and he saw that the only way, he said there's no other way unless he gives up the time stone, which he knows is going to result in his own death. Now he doesn't know if this is the one out of 14 million chances that he's going to come back and live again. Yeah. But he knows that there is no other way. So he has to do it. So I don't think he gets enough credit for that. And so that's why I gave him a four. So next up is plot. Um, for this movie in particular, I think it was so... Groundbreaking in that way because uh, because I got so mad at you at the end because <laughs> I thought I was going to a superhero movie It was going to be a tough fight But our heroes were going to win even though it's a classic good versus evil because it didn't follow the classic good versus evil plot um, Our guys lose it's devastating and for this I think you don't you don't ever look away You know uh, unless you need to get Kleenex as I did so I, I think it could have probably gone on for another hour And I still would have been just you know completely engrossed in it um so I, it was great i gave it a four yep i also gave it a four which brings us to female empowerment what role do women play in this film i gave it a four okay uh so i also gave it a four um for me one of the really strong female empowerment moments that i loved was when what was her name proxima? proxima midnight there it is uh is fighting 
uh, Scarlet Witch yeah. and says, you'll die alone. And then camera pans over to Black Widow and says, she's not alone. And you see Black Widow and Okoye are right there with her. I think you get a lot of male camaraderie in action movies, but you seldom see the women in that same capacity. And I think that was a really good female empowerment moment to show that, you know, women support women. So next up is soundtrack. I gave it a one, um, and really that was for the indi individual theme songs that happened throughout the film. Oh, yeah. here I thought, I'm like, oh yeah, she's gonna say exactly what I'm thinking. And I, I pointed to the camera like, you're yeah, gonna you, do it. You're no, right. I look like an idiot, because <laughs> I gave it a one just for the one Guardian song. Moving on to humor. For me, humor got a 44. 49. I think the payoff at the end of this movie and how devastating it is to you as an audience member you get that payoff because these guys are making you laugh beforehand. Um, yeah. And I've always said, you know, when they can make you laugh before they make you cry, that is the epitome of bringing an audience on a journey with you. So next up are visual effects. I gave this a score of four. Yeah, agreed. I gave it a four as well. Next up are action sequences. And there were six action sequences in this movie. And I thought they were all amazing. I was really kind of sad when they were ended, so I gave it a four. So six times four gives it a 24 total points for action. So my action score was 18. The reason I gave it a three was because I thought this movie hit the perfect balance of action sequences with still managing to do storytelling and having mm -hmm. some significant scenes of heart and, and humor and everything else that you need in a movie to make us care about those action scenes. So next up is dialogue. Uh, and on this, I'm actually going to take a page from your book. I definitely think there were some quotable lines in here that were humorous. But for me, what really stuck out were the some of the poignant quotes in there. And I felt like those are probably the ones that I'm more likely to quote out of context. Mm. Um, and so for that reason, I gave it a four as being a highly quotable film. When Captain America tells that stupid general douchebag, I'm not looking for forgiveness. And yeah. frankly, I'm done asking for permission. I gave this a three. Uh, I, I thought it was sharp, it was clever, it was witty. Uh, I think an argument definitely could be made for four. I think maybe the reason I didn't give it a four is because there was just so much going on and everything was just so impressive that uh, the dialogue was really good, but I guess it just didn't stick out to me as much as maybe the action sequences or the visual effects or you know all the different side characters playing in. A love story in this one is between Vision and Wanda. I gave it a four. I said if these two ever break up, there's gonna be some ugly crying and Marvel's getting a heated letter and that's because there was ugly crying. Yeah. Rest in peace, Vision. Uh, yeah, if I, I give it a four as well. Which brings us to heart. I gave it a four. Um, I thought it warms the hearts and waters the eyes, uh, not just for Scarlet Witch and Vision. Um, I think Gamora, obviously, her death was was very heartbreaking, uh, and Spider-Man's death, uh, to see what it does to, to Tony Stark, um, is, is another kind of heartbreaking scene. One thing that I think deserves a special shout out too, which surprised me, I think, when I was watching it this time as to how moving it was. Rocket's got this moment where he says, okay, I gotta go be the captain now. And yeah. he goes back and he has this heart to heart with Thor. And Thor's crying. I mean, he's talking about how, like, he lost his mother and his father and his brother and his best friend and his sister. And he really feels like he's got nothing left to lose. Mm -hmm. But what I loved about that moment was how seemingly light heart hearted Thor was trying to keep it on the surface. But the actor was so brilliant at filling all the emotion underneath that. That he's crying and even though he like tries to do the smile like hey I've got nothing left to lose he's doing that while he's crying you just get such a sense of what the stakes are for these guys moving on to our final scores uh, so for me for Avengers Affinity War I gave it <clears throat> 152 and I also got a fist bump from me uh, when Thor entered so that gives it a total score of 153 so I gave it 155, but it got a fist bump from me when Captain America enters, so it's 156. Which makes the total score 154.5, which makes it the top, top of the do top dog okay. right now. It's in the number one spot, uh, Avengers Infinity War. We still got, I think, four more films to go, um, so we'll see if it stays there, but right now it's got a pretty comfy lead. It is interesting when you do this with a score sheet on what you think makes a good Marvel film, how that compares to... What you personally... Yes. you know think is uh, are, are your favorites um you know so that's why that's why we're doing it this way versus uh what our personal favorites are it's kind of more scientific even if it still is a little bit arbitrary which is why it's kind of fun and why it would be interesting to hear your feedback as well because it might surprise you uh what you're thinking of 
these movies or what you're expecting these movies to be in terms of where they would rank and then maybe once you kind of go through and look at the different elements of a great Marvel movie what really captures it and what doesn't feel free to leave your thoughts comments and scores on Avengers Infinity War our score for it was 154.5 but that is definitely not definitive